baptistry and you go underneath the water and you come back out, it, it's a picture. It symbolizes what Christ did on the cross when he died and went into the grave and then he rose again. Okay, So it symbolizes the new life that's inside of us. It doesn't regenerate us. You know, Pastor Ben and I don't come out and bless the water or anything. I tell people it comes out of a hose. It's normal water. Okay, But it's, it's, a, it's symbolic of something that we've already committed to. It's symbolic of a change that's already happened inside of our hearts. So I want to introduce some really great folks. You guys want to come on up here? John, you can come up and see how this report to <clears throat> This is Brad and Monica Wenzel. They have a really great story. We, we have just a snapshot of that story, but I always tell folks, um, these guys up here, they're part of our church family. Use this as an invitation to come and get to know them and talk with them this week or another week and say, hey, why don't you tell me a little bit about your story? I feel like that's a lot of the great things that could come out of a baptism and having folks like this up here. So, Brad, you're up first. Why don't you tell us a little bit about why you're standing here on the stage today and the story of Jesus in your life? Okay, well, when I was a teenager, I was an atheist, despite, you know, being raised in the church. And then uh, probably around my mid-20s, uh, started having a lot of dark things happen in my life and uh, going on with my family. And I talked a lot with my brother, my aunt, my uncle, uh, John, and my mom. And they were telling me things about God that uh, made me curious, but I was still skeptical. And finally one night I was just laying in bed just so scared of the world around me. and. Uh, asked Jesus Christ into my heart and I instantly felt a calm and, and comfort and the fear was gone. So from that day forward, you know, I've been a Christ follower. But uh, but now I just hope that I can be the leader I'm, I'm called to be and, and lead my family in the life of Christ. That's great, man. So something I really love about um, Brad's story, did you guys notice he mentioned three people that kind of all had a significant part in leading him to the Lord and it wasn't any one of them? I think that's great because I think we so often take on the entire idea of evangelism that we're going to start with someone that doesn't know the Lord and bring them all the way to this full circle completed of discipleship. And the reality is that we each have a part of that. And we've got to be faithful to the part, whether it's planting the seed or watering it or maybe reaping the harvest later. We, ought to, we each have a part of it. We've got, we got John on the stage right now. He had a part of that story with Brad, but he wasn't the only one. I think that's really cool. So um, thanks for sharing, man. And then uh, before we move on to Monica, do you have a verse that you memorized or tried to memorize? <laughs> yeah, hopefully I can get it. It's Isaiah 40, 28 through 31. It's, do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives power to the weary, and he, or he gives strength to the weary, and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Excellent. Did you guys give him a round of applause? That is the longest first passage that anybody has memorized for baptism. I applauded Brad ahead of time. I was like, do it, man. Do it and spit it out. So, um, Monica, <laughs> Monica, tell us about why you're here. Tell us the story of Jesus in your life. So, me and Brad were married in October of last year. And even though um, I had found my soulmate, I still had this void in my heart. And uh, we wanted to do things the right way, so we came to church on Sunday. And Pastor Ben was talking about marriage. And it was like, whoa, this is exactly what I needed to hear. Um, and we felt really good afterwards, so we decided to come back the next Sunday. And the same thing spoke to us. We came back the next Sunday, and we've been coming ever since. Um, since... You know, this journey ha of mine began, I've been feeling closer and closer to God, um, and my friends and family um, have all noticed this change in me, and I want to bring people to Christ, and um, I want other people to have what I have. So, um, you know, now that I've been coming here, this void in my heart has been filled, and I just want to be obedient and in Christ and walk with Him, and this is the next step. It's so good. I like how both the, the part of both of you guys' stories, there's a tangible difference. 
after you said, hey, I, want, I want to accept Jesus in my heart, and you even said, I, you know, other people were noticing a change in me. So um, your, your verse was Galatians 2.20. Do you have it memorized? I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, it goes, so I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Yes. All right, we're ready. Let's go for it. the only living Son of God? Do you believe that he died on the cross and was raised on the third day as forgiveness for your sins? Have you fully given your life to Jesus Christ to follow him? Praise God. Yeah. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, I baptize you, my brother. get you guys. Uh, all these things kind of come together. God is glorified this morning. This is why we exist as Christ followers in the church to partner to see people uh, birthed into the kingdom just like that. You guys, this is pretty awesome. Uh, thank you, Lord God. Now, uh, we pray that you would go uh, uh, with us now as we get back after uh, things that we're doing at work. Watch over these uh, young believers now, Lord, and help us as a church to equip and train and disciple so that we can further the kingdom. We love you, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we'll see you in church again. Let me get a pick. Hang on, let me get a